Hi guys, um, it's Thankful Thursday, um, it's me Rachel and um, I'm here with Kelly this week. Um, I'm sorry I didn't make a video um, last week, um, I just was really really busy, I had um, friends here, I had Hannah and Tracy here and it just wasn't convenient at all to be able to make a video, we live in like this little flat and it was kind of difficult. Um, to find some space. Um, um, I hope I can make a decent video this week. I've actually had a really, really fucking difficult weekend. Um, so I'm a little bit <laughs> um, not quite myself um, and um, kind of feeling exhausted. Um, so um, the question this week um, I think came from um, feedback that um, Kel had received um, from one of her videos um, and it is can the voice of the eating disorder ever be pushed back down to a weak whimper do you think we only temporarily drown out the ED, vo ED voice by psychological tricks um, I've got a few thoughts on that really because um, I guess um, my, my initial thought was to do with the different types of therapy that you engage in um, within something like CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, um, the therapy itself deals with um, these thoughts, um, naming them as irrational, um, whether that be in an eating disorder, depression, um, anxiety, whatever kind of struggles that you have. Um, and I guess that in something like CBT you're dealing with, say, um, a question, I mean one that I did time and time again, I am fat and then you would look at the evidence for and against that so you'd say right okay with a, with, with a therapist you do this, I mean then you can do it as homework after, um, you know, um, what's the evidence for this, well you know I would come up with well because I think I look fat because of this, because of that, because of this and then I'd kind of look at the evidence against it and it'd be kind of like, well, I'm smaller than all of my friends, I wear a size, whatever, um, my weight isn't within the healthy range or whatever. Um, and then you'd look at different distortions that are causing you to have this thought. Um, I'm not going to reel them all out here, but if anybody wants to, I mean, you can just put CBT into Google and it will come up with, you know, what CBT is and with a list of the distortions and how to work through them. And then what kind of happens is that you have a belief system. So when you first say that thought, um, I am fat, you'd say, right, I believe that 100%. And then you'd go through these distortions and you'd look at the different ways that you're thinking is distorted and then you'd say okay I believe this 80% now I mean the idea is, is, is to lessen that belief as you, as you work through it um, so I guess on that level um, my feeling with CBT is that it can work and it can help somebody on a very surface level it can um, explore perhaps the reasons why you feel the need to hurt yourself or um, to not eat or any of those things so in that regard, I think that CBT can really, really help, but as has been sort of put forward in this question, is it just kind of, well, psychological tricks of using something like CBT? Um, personally, um, I, I could work with that to an extent, um, and of course in my day-to-day -day life now, you know, I do try to use the rational side of myself, and I'm, when I'm working with clients, I would kind of say to them, look, I cannot take away how you feel, you know, if you if you feel you're, at a, I don't know, a very common one that I, I come across is to do with abuse and the person who's been abused blaming themselves for the abuse. So I can say to them, look, I recognise that you feel you are to blame for this and this is that's your feeling and I cannot take away your feeling. But what I can do here is sit with you and say that, you know, for a start, you were, you know, an innocent victim. You know, you you never provoked anybody to do this to you, and kind of work through a number of things that then kind of shifts the thinking to okay, you might have the feeling I'm to blame for this, but then you can sort of say, well, do you know, rationally, um, I'm going to use an example. You know, when I was raped, it was kind of like, well, it was my fault. I provoked the incident. You know, if I'd never made um, him angry, or if I done what he'd asked me to do or or if I hadn't refused to do what he wanted to do and you know um, 
I don't know. I, I, I just came up with a number of things and it was just kind of like, well, it must be my fault because, you know, he was this charming guy to everybody else and, you know, he wouldn't do this to me. And then it was, you know, over time I've been able to say, well, do you know what, I might feel like I was to blame for that, but let me look at this rationally, you know. I wasn't in control of that situation. He was threatening, he was violent, I was scared. Um, I shut down because of how my fears were. And by just working through some of that, um, I kind of... Um, found that I could use a rational side to me so that when there was conflict, let's say with my eating disorder or, you know, and it was something like I've just eaten a huge amount of food and I could sit there and think, well, I feel physically really full. I'm feeling really guilty for what I've eaten. And then I could sort of say, well, but do you know what? It actually was okay because my best friend ate the same as me and my best friend is healthy and happy and she, I don't believe she's going to gain, you know, two stone overweight. So I do think that using some of these psychological techniques, the things that you use in therapy, of course, are incredibly important um, in terms of helping you manage your eating disorder when you're trying to recover. Um, as for whether this can actually, you know, be pu pushed down, yeah, I do believe it. And I don't actually believe that by endlessly challenging yourself this way, I do think that if each time you have this sort of irrational thought, you know, I'm too full, I need to be sick, whatever, and if you can, like, talk that through and say, well, actually... I ate the same yesterday or I had that meal last week and I felt okay about it last week. It's just that today it feels too much. But these sorts of techniques that you do learn, they are coping mechanisms. That's all they are. They're coping mechanisms and you can use them within an eating disorder, within self-harm, when it comes to abuse. Um, my girlfriend at the moment is in the process of recovering from her anorexia and, you know, she needs to learn some of the coping mechanisms. I mean, for me, there's... there's three or four stages um, and actually the retreat taught me this um, when I was there and it was kind of like the initial period is that kind of trying to challenge yourself and trying to eat better um, if you need your weight stabilizing stabilizing your weight to try and stop engaging in behaviors um, and in that process um, you know be learning coping mechanisms to help you not self-harm, to help you eat enough, and um, to help you not binge, purge, or whatever you know your difficulties are. Um, so go through that process, and, and they did it in a four-monthly cycle. So let's say you did the first four months with that kind of trying to eat, um, trying to find coping mechanisms. Um, that next four months is just about stabilizing yourself. It's about um, learning even more techniques to be able to manage on a kind of daily basis and to um, have stabilised, I mean I use that word again, state. so the initial part is that kind of overcoming, going from ill to kind of getting yourself into recovery and trying to fight some of those things. The second part is learning even more coping mechanisms to deal with some of the difficulties such as maybe, I'm going to use the example of weight gain because it's a common problem to me. Um, and then in the next four months, when you've established that um, security, and that's kind of using those different techniques I've just talked about, a lot of CBT techniques, the next four months um, are kind of um, looking, or kind of looking at what is possibly at the root of your eating disorder, and looking at abuse. I'm, I'm going to use the word abuse again because it's such a common issue that comes up time and time again. And so for me, I mean, I never completed my cycle there, but that's kind of what I've done in my own way in my recovery since 2004. Stabilised my eating, gained some weight, tried to help myself with my self-harming, getting myself out of bed, easing the depression, and then kind of using coping mechanisms, using therapy to work on coping mechanisms. So if I am feeling particularly anxious after a meal, what am I, you know, literally providing myself with a list of coping mechanisms the next part you know for me was was, was to, to stabilize and to begin to look at the abuse I didn't particularly have a choice about whether I worked on my abuse because I was suffering such severe sort of flashbacks and depressions because of it so then I went through a period where I worked on a lot of my abuse and then sort of the last cycle of my therapy I mean my therapy hasn't ended and it will probably be ongoing has been this whole idea about right I've got myself stable, I've dealt with what was some of the core, core issues, and I mean like the rape, I mean some of my childhood, the stuff that happened in my childhood, the, my personality and how it interacts with the environment, all of these different things, 
and then kind of learning to live and how you continue to live and, and, and engage in a day-to-day -day basis with all the challenges that is, whether it's social challenges, starting a job, going back to university, and actually staying safe within those. And so I do think that, yes, it is possible to lose the eating disorder voice because I'm an example of that and, and I'm sure that there's other people and I've got to the point now where I don't <laughs> struggle with it on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't. Most days, okay, I have my days when I feel fat or I feel full or I don't like myself or food is difficult, but for the most part, I, you know, I eat, I live, I breathe, I go out, I do my chores, I, I study, and it's just, food is just in there and there isn't all that complication. So yeah, I do think it can be <laughs> eased. I'm going to leave it there because I think I've rambled on for ages, so um, hopefully I'll see you next week, guys. Okay, bye.